Hello, friends. Jeff Wilson here. I hope your day is splendid. I just have a uh, quick little demonstration of uh, how to use just a normal ankle band to work on some of the weakest areas for runners. If you have not liked, comment, or subscribed, whatever channel you're on, I don't know why I just did that dance, but I hope you liked it. Uh, if you have not done those things, please do so, and I uh, hope you enjoy. All right, so I'm going to keep things pretty simple. There's many ways you can use these bands. Uh, I'm sure you've used these to some degree for like clamshells or some monster walks, and I'm going to show you a variation of monster walks that really works on some of the lower parts of your leg versus just trying to get your glutes. Um, as well, I'm going to focus on the, the hip flexors a bit. As, um, I'm also going to work on the hip flexors <laughs> because that is a very typical area that is weak on runners. So you're going to get a little bit of some of the peroneals um, on the side part of the, uh, the lower part of the leg on the calves here. A little bit of calves, a little bit of dorsiflexures, which is what makes your foot go like this. And uh, like I said a moment ago, hip flexors and glutes. So here you go. All right, so you may want to sit down when doing this. You're going to put the band right on the tops and bottoms of your feet. like so. <laughs> do a penguin walk. And the first thing we're going to do is literally do what would normally be a monster walk. People normally put this up above their knees, and you're going to do this below your feet. I would not use a band that has, um, if it's been used for a long time, that's really weak. It could snap on you. won't hurt you, I'm sure, but just so you know. Um, so I like to do somewhere between 8 and 12, one way, 8 and 12 the other way. And then I like to do go right from here to a like knee drive. And now you can you, you can do this actually kind of lazily, if you will. You can just kind of like go up and down. You'll get a little bit out of that. I don't want you to be very purposeful. You might even want to use some support with like a PVC pipe, hold on to a pole, the wall. I don't really care. But I like to go slow with it. You might lose your, your balance like I just did. But you want to dorsiflex your feet up, so bring up your toes towards your shin. And then this opposite leg, this is where you can really get some good work in with both legs at the same time. Right now I'm getting my hip flexor on that leg, but these, this opposite leg, I'm pushing away. So you're getting this like rubber band pull away. You get your big toe planting into the ground, you get your planter. Um, plantar tendons and stuff really like force into the ground. Just don't scrunch your toes. And then you get this whole extension of your leg. So your butt muscle should get some work in, especially once you get some good rhythm with doing this consistently. And if you can't go to 90 degrees, I get it. You may just need to strengthen quite a bit here or your band is too strong. That might be, a, it might be as simple as that. So I'll normally do those two things first. Sometimes I'll just do three sets of each, and then I'll move on to this next one, which is a very tiny one. But I'll spread the band, and then I'll literally take my foot up and out with some good resistance from the other foot. So here I'm working on some of the dorsiflexors of my foot, what brings your foot up like this, as well as some of those side uh, peroneals, if you will, some of these small muscles that help your toes lift up like this as well. Um, usually I'd say are pretty weak on runners and that may have something to do with how you, your foot lands. Like if your foot lands to the outside, those muscles just might be very underactive. And uh, so it's a really small exercise, usually not very taxing. You can get away with 15 or 20 of these, but not necessarily needed. So I'll do this exercise right after, let's make sure this is on, yep. Uh, right after those other two. I'll usually take like short breaks, just FYI, just in general. I'll take a little bit, some maybe 15, 20 second breaks between those. And then my last thing that I'll typically do in this little series is get a little bend in my leg. I'll show you from the side in a moment. But I do a little reverse step back in a diagonal fashion. So there we go. You know. um, so your, uh, your legs are bent. So you get a little work, just like that hip flexor one. The opposite leg, in some cases, actually works harder. And so you just kick back like this. You'll get this outer part of your glute 
And then you kind of get the same thing on the other leg, but having this band over the foot just works the muscles quite a bit differently. And I think it really emphasizes down into the feet and the lower legs as well, which is a nice little, little bonus. So there you go. There you have it. Uh, four exercises I do pretty regularly, whether it's on my leg strengthening day or it's just something a warm up. Maybe I'll do one or excuse me, two sets before a run to just get everything lit up and feel like I'm ready to go. There you have it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, musings, don't, don't be afraid to ask. And I will see you on the other side with the next video.